Hello and welcome to Culloden Painting Studio. In this video I'm going to look at using Citadel contrast paints on some Napoleonic era French line infantry. Um, these models are from the Perry Miniatures 1807 to 1814 battalion kit. Um, they're plastics. Um, I'm doing this video as it was suggested in comment on a previous video that someone would like to, to see how I'd go about using the contrast paints um, on some French infantry. Um, if you've got any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, please drop them in the comments below. Um, with contrast paints, I think it's always good to start with a really good shake on your paints. Um, we can see at the bottom of the, the white here that the pigment has settled. Um, I've placed some stainless steel uh, agitators in there, so when I give it a shake it helps to, to mix that in. Um, it's important to do so. Um, you end up with inconsistent colours if you don't, um, and odd effects like extra glossy finishes. So give things a good shake for a couple of minutes um, before you start to, to use these paints. The primer that I've used is Citadel's Wraithbone. It's a warm off-white, um, which I think works better uh, for cloth and flesh than, say, their alternative, which is, is Grey Sear, which is a, a light grey first colour that was used was the Apothecary White, used that um, over the, the chest, so we've got the, the shirt, white of the jacket, uh, cross straps, as well as the, the gaiters. Um, on the, the pack as well at the back there are some white straps, as there is some uh, white facing on the, the rear of the, the jackets as well. The skin was picked out with Dark Oath Flesh. And the model to the right start to add in some of the other colours. I've used Skeleton Horde on the shackle cover and the breeches. When I was applying it to the breeches, um, I started at the bottom of the leg and worked up. And that just meant that there was um, more of the, the tone left in the deeper recesses um, at the base of the foot, where we might imagine um, the breeches are going to get that little bit dirtier. Next up was picking out the collars and cuffs with some Blood Angels Red. Um, suggest a, a fine brush here and you can leave some of the white primer showing at the edges of the cuffs and the collar. Um, not a completely necessary detail but it does just add that little bit more definition to the areas. The pack and the musket stock were done in Gore Grunta fur. Turn the models around can hopefully see now that we've got a bit of definition showing in the nicely sculpted fur on the pack um, and we can see where we've got the, the facings done in white and straps done in white at the back as well. So we'll take these paints out and move on to the next step which is to start applying uh, some of the blue to the jacket. Um, I've used Leviathan Blue. It's the darkest of the blues in the contrast line. Um, Ultramarine's Blue um, is another alternative which is, is, is suitable. I just prefer a, a really dark blue. Um, on the central model, we started to, to pick out um, the pack and also the black of the boots and the peak. So Basilicanum Grey for the great coat on top of the pack and Black Templar for um, boots and peak of the shako. For the pompon, um, decided these would be fourth company so gone for Magus Purple. the hair on the models and also any leather straps or um, gourds hanging from um, their uh, cross belts has been picked out in snake bite leather and model to the right also um, has the metallic picked out contrast paints um, not so um, 
much for doing metallics with unless you want to take time and do a non-metallic finish which can look very good um, but I have used simple um, metallic straight out the bottle so we've got some plate mail metal on the musket to pick out the, the bayonet and the barrel um, and some Vallejo brass which has been used um, for the buttons and other little details like so uh, we'll just turn these around so we can just have a little look at the rear of the models at this point so you can see where the, the blue um, has gone on the coattails and um, packs with their grey great coats. Um, Gore Grunt of Fur for the um, fur of the packs. Um, model in the centre, I'm not sure if it's a piece of meat or a piece of bread that he's got strapped up to his back, but I also did that in snake bite leather. And the covers for the, the bottles at the waist have been um, picked out either with skeleton hoard. Um, or, or where there's no cover, uh, Basilicanum Grey. So finishing touches applied um, to the models here. I've used a bit of Coat Arms uh, Ink Armour Wash uh, over the musket and that just helps to add a bit of definition and shading. Um, takes the, the bright shine off the metal, make it look a bit more used. And the model on the right um, has had a few more details um, picked out. This is not a necessary um, step, but if you just want to take things to uh, the next level of, of detail, you could take a bit more time here. Um, I've used some of that in Karma Wash as, as a black liner to sort of pick out um, between the, the cross straps. Just make this guy a bit more central. And some highlighting has been uh, done to the to the coat. Um, I used some army painter deep blue. His nose, cheekbones, knuckles, they've been picked out with some um, corpse pale. The off-white of his breeches, some drake tooth. Um, Vallejo cork brown um, was used to add a little bit of highlight to the, the gourd hanging from his belt. Um, also some wood grain on his musket. White was highlighted with a bit of Vallejo off-white. And black was highlighted um, with Citadel um, Eschen Grey. I'm not sure if that's focused particularly well. Okay. So there we have it. Um, I think contrast paints, they, they do make it a bit quicker and easier, especially on, on larger areas where there is quite a bit of definition, such as folds in cloth um, for... It's a nice one-step technique for, for doing flesh without having to go back and washing it. Um, I still think a little bit of extra um, definition and detailing um, really helps to, to finish off a model. But uh, when you're painting 24, 36, 48, 72, however many um, line infantry you're, you're needing, um, getting things to a, a basic level is quite straightforward to, to do. So the model on the left, is, as we're looking at them here, I think that is perfectly ready to, to jump on the table. And one on the right, perhaps with the extra uh, details picked out. I um, forgot to mention the red piping that we can see as well. Um, he would be good perhaps in the, the, the front rank of your unit just to um, really make the uh, finished product look as good as possible. Still not convinced they're going to entirely replace um, acrylics for me, but I think that the speed at which you can put units together is a great, great tool. Um, and mixing between standard acrylics and the contrast paints can lead to some really nice finishes on models that are not that labour intensive. So tell me if you've liked this video and if you want to see um, more of similar, again, place a comment below. If you want to see something different, place a comment below. Um, thanks to all the recent subscribers, it's been a real boom. Um, thanks to Gavin Booth for a, a shout out on his channel that seems to have brought quite a few people um, over this way. And we'll 
speak to you again soon with a new video. Bye-bye.